So I was late to this one, but considering it's been pretty popular, it was still right on my homepage on Netflix. I didn't have to go far to find it. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about a Netflix release from January that I missed called Finding Ohana. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts on this movie were, if you already saw it, if you're excited for it, if you weren't planning on seeing it, let me know so we can discuss. Also make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these Netflix reviews as it helps me out immensely by getting my channel out there and growing the community. And if you are new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with reviews of newer films, older films, hidden gems, and so much more on a near daily basis. But let's not waste any more time and let's talk about Finding Ohana. This takes place during a summer in rural Oahu, which takes an exciting turn for two Brooklyn-raised siblings, when a journal pointing to long-lost treasure sets them on an epic adventure with new friends and leads them to reconnect with their Hawaiian heritage. This is written by former Marvel Comics colorist Christina Strain and is the feature debut of director Jude Wang. And I know this has been said countless times by now and I'm just rehashing this, but it has to be said it's pretty much a newer version of The Goonies. You're going to get a lot of the same vibes when watching this. Though, that's not necessarily a bad thing, as The Goonies is a fun movie, and so is this. I will say, it can be a very cheesy, predictable film, as it's overtly family-friendly, considering its focus on child protagonists, some beats you can call early on, and its extremely strong focus on the meaning of family, which makes sense, since Ohana means family. And it's something kids will definitely enjoy the most out of all demographics, graphics here. It's definitely geared more towards them than anything, but it also doesn't alienate older audiences, and I think there's plenty here for all ages to enjoy, even if it is to differing degrees. In fact, I think it's the sort of film that, similar to how kids who grew up on the Goonies still enjoy that as much to this day as adults, this will evoke that same feel from younger generations who grow up watching this. It has a big heart and a very sweet tone. Plus, for the most part, it has an energetic feel, with extensive pop culture culture references, like there's one scene where a few characters have a conversation just about Megan Trainer, as well as lively pop songs in the soundtrack, like in one scene that I particularly enjoyed, which was set to Black Eyed Peas' Pump It. It also has an extremely charismatic cast here, namely Peely, played by Kia Piahu, who's one of the two siblings from Brooklyn, as well as Casper, played by Owen Bacaro, who she befriends in Hawaii. I thought they were both very charming and brought a great energy to the film. You also have Alex Ayano as Iowane, Peely's brother, and Lindsay Watson as Hannah, who Iowane befriends. And I thought they were fine. There's definitely this very predictable romance thrown in there between them that's set up very obviously from the beginning, but the performances themselves were fine. And there was a fun dynamic once all four of our main characters set out on this adventure. And there are actually two very distinct storylines going on here. One is the four younger characters setting out to find this treasure in the second half, and the other is this storyline involving Peely and Iowane's whole family, which takes up most of the first half. Because we also have Kelly Hu as their mother Leilani, and Branscombe Richmond as their grandfather Kimo. And I thought they were both solid as well. Richmond especially had some funny moments as this cranky old man figure who's very sad in his ways. I really liked his performance here. The thing I'd say though with this storyline is that much of the dynamic among the whole family is that there's a lot of arguing and I mean a lot of it. Almost to the point that some of it felt a bit mean-spirited. The movie as a whole isn't, but a few of those arguments get pretty nasty. And they also felt a tad bit repetitive. I get why they were focusing so much on these characters going at it. To show this family is not as close as they used to be, and that they had some issues prior to the start of this. So that way there's this sense of emotional satisfaction as the story develops and their dynamic starts to change. And I really liked how the storyline was handled later on in the film. Though I think we could have condensed some of the arguments in the beginning as what happens is it causes the movie's first half to drag just a bit. This is a two hour film and the first hour really hones in on the family problems and while it makes for great character development later on, I just think it hits some of those same beats more times than it needed to. Especially since we got a good idea of what this dynamic was like early on and it stalled getting more in depth with the treasure storyline a little sooner. But once we get to the actual treasure hunt in the second half, it gets considerably 
significantly better. It starts moving at a much quicker pace and I had a lot of fun with it. And this is the part of the film that I feel will be even more accessible to all ages. In addition to the Goonies, there was this sort of Indiana Jones vibe at times, with the way our characters had to move through certain obstacles, and I like the energy of these sequences. Though there's also this one recurring gag they do, where Peely reads pirate stories about the treasure, and you have three actors, played by Chris Parnell, Ricky Garcia, and Mark Evan Jackson, recreating the stories. And the way it's presented is lifted right out of the Ant-Man movies. The kids will put words into these characters mouths and you'll never hear Chris Parnell and the other actors actually speak but they'll mouth the words and you'll hear the kids voices instead and even though it's not an original gag it's still fun for what it is if you've seen the Ant-Man movies and are familiar with that gag I can see how it'll rub some people the wrong way but I thought the physical based performances of all the actors in these segments made them fairly enjoyable especially since we saw them all throughout the film and I also liked the way in which all these storylines ultimately came together again you can probably probably call where it ends up going, but I think the execution was pretty solid for what it is, bringing together all of its themes in a nice way with a heartwarming feel that will put a smile on your face. This was just a nice movie. It's predictable, and it's definitely not shy about the fact that it's geared more towards kids than anything, but it's still accessible to adults as well, if not as much, especially for how it evokes the feel of films like The Goonies and Indiana Jones. The film has a lot going on for it, and it does cause it to drag at certain points, mainly in its first half, but there's still a fun sense of adventure mixed with themes about family that, when put together, make for a sweet, enjoyable time. If you haven't seen it by now, it's on Netflix, and you should give it a shot. Finding Ohana gets a 7 out of 10. So let me know, did you see Finding Ohana or are you planning to see it? And what were your thoughts? Did you like the story? Do you have a favorite adventure movie? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it. And for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll catch you next time.